Turning now to my very patient panel, Mary Kate Carey. She's a senior <laughs> fellow for presidential studies at the University of Virginia's Miller Center, and Andrew Cohen, author and journalist with the Ottawa Citizen. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, who's your Andrew? <laughs> we uh, we are going to show you the tweet, one of many, that Donald Trump sent out this morning, but this one is catching everyone's attention. Donald Trump saying, James Comey better hope that there are no tapes of our conversations before he starts leaking to the press. He's got tapes in quotations, reminiscent of the time that the president put tapes around taping when he was referring to wiretapping uh, of Obama, wiretapping Trump Tower. Mary Kate, to you first. What do you make of this? Is this a threat to James Comey? What is the president trying to say? Uh, I, I did not take it as a threat. I, I think it is, uh, if you've read the papers this morning, you'll know that there are what I guess I would call competing narratives uh, about what happened in this dinner that was held in January between the president and the FBI director. Uh, the, the problem I have is that most of the coverage right now, the, the, by, by the way, here in Washington, it is saturation wall-to-wall -wall coverage uh, right now on the firing of James Comey. I would much rather listen to Prime Minister Trudeau talking about economic growth and trade and infrastructure and, and can we please stop this sideshow. But anyway, um, it, this, th there's two different versions of what happened at this dinner. And uh, my problem with it is that the press coverage, especially in the Washington Post, but also the New York Times, includes a tremendous number of unnamed sources. There was a story yesterday, 30 unnamed sources talking to the Post. And, and you just don't know what to believe. You don't know who's credible. You don't know who's got an agenda. And, and so there's a lot of conflicting uh, stories going on right now about who said what to who. And, and I think that's what the president's trying to address is he's got his version, I've got my version. And, and I, I did not take it as a threat to him at all. But, but many uh, people, it's, Mary Kate, it's just will adding to the craziness. Yeah, and many people will say, well, we don't know what to believe from the White House either, because the first reasons given for uh, Comey's firing was Hillary Clinton's email. And then it was the president saying that Comey wasn't doing a good job. Now it's, and then it was on the advice of, of, of others. And now it's, he says yesterday to Lester Holt of NBC News that it was about Russia. So, Andrew, what do you make of what's going on, the shifting message, this new tweet? And, and I'll add to that, do you think it's possible that the president taped the conversation during dinner with James Comey? Well, Mary Kate is very kind and very generous to the president. And I think, yes, it's entirely possible Donald Trump did that. The word in this saturation coverage that uh, Mary Kate rightly says has enveloped Washington, one word that comes up is Watergate. And I'm not so sure there's a direct comparison to Watergate. But if there is one element of Watergate that has now been introduced by the president of the United States, it's the prospect that he may have taped, recorded secretly conversations in his office. I don't think he did. I think it was more a figure of speech from a man who favors hyperbole. However, he did use that in a tweet. And what he's saying is, he's saying, Director Comey, or former Director Comey, if you go before the Senate or want to talk now about what happened at that dinner, you have your version and I have mine. I would think Director Comey would like a, a recording of that conversation because one element or one report on that conversation is that Donald Trump demanded his personal loyalty. And he, Comey, has told others, I refuse that. I promised loyalty to the justice system. He said he was asked twice in that dinner by President Trump, would he be loyal to him personally? And he said no. So the idea now that President Trump may have taped that conversation, that there may have been a difference in interpretation, well, perhaps that's so. And I would think that um, if indeed there, was, there were a tape recording, that he would like to hear it. But I doubt there really was. I think it's probably a figure of speech, and it's another way Donald Trump wants to bully people, which he does. Mary Kate? Yeah, it's, it's clearly uh, part of this. We've seen it now for, what, a year, Marcia? Uh, Donald Trump trying to change the subject and uh, distract. And I, I do agree with Andrew. I think it's a figure of speech. I don't think he literally taped it. One thing I do want to say about the Watergate analogy is uh, just the, earlier this week, the Nixon Library 
uh, put out a statement saying that all these people who are comparing this to Watergate need to remember that President Nixon never fired an FBI director. He only fired the attorney general and the deputy attorney general. <laughs> and to clarify, uh, you know, the difference between then and now, uh, because uh, there's just so much uh, hyperbole on both sides in, in terms of this. And it's just getting uh, debilitating here in Washington. It's all anybody's talking about. And, and I think there's a real problem if this continues. Uh, I think we, at some point we have to switch to health care reform, the economy, you know, ISIS, North Korea. Uh, huge, huge problem right now, how literally the press is taking everything that's coming out. Uh, and, and when you combine that with the lack of message discipline by the White House and the, and the confusing accounts, uh, it, it's, it's just creating chaos. Okay, so to that point, Andrew, and a final thought from you, since we have to do a condensed version of this panel, uh, how, do we, how do we move away from this? How do we get off this this Well, this uh, we, we, it won't happen anytime soon. Donald Trump now has to appoint a new director of the FBI, whomever that person is, and it may be a woman, incidentally, Kelly Ott, the former senator from New Hampshire, um, and he or she has to be confirmed by the United States Senate. It will take a majority of senators. There are Republicans who are suspicious. There will be hearings. At those hearings, questions will be asked. Already, the deputy director of the FBI has said the inquiry will continue into uh, r possible Russian interference in the election. He said the men and women of the FBI will do the right thing. So this isn't going away, and we can talk about health care, we can talk about tax reform, we can talk about infrastructure spending, but until this, this thing is resolved about who did what in the campaign last fall, this is going to continue, and Donald Trump helps it to continue by continuing to tweet and make charges and, frankly, bully people. All right, and we'll leave it there for today. Andrew Cohen, Mary-Kate Carey, always glad to have you with us. Appreciate your perspectives. Thanks for having us. Thank you.